How's it going, everybody? So, yeah, I put this talk together a couple weeks ago and presented it at my local PHP users group. And I figured I would just record it real quick so that I could put it out on the internet uh, just for fun. So, anyway, this talks about Eloquent ORM. And basically, I want to show you some of the cool things about it. I originally intended that this talk was going to be focusing on some of the more badass uh, advanced features that are out there. But, um, over time, when I was putting the presentation together, I realized that in order to really get anything out of the um, presentation, I'd needed to explain a little bit so that some so everybody had like a frame of reference in case they never used Eloquent. So in the beginning, we kind of go through that, and then we go a little bit more advanced into what Eloquent can do for you. So to start off, uh, it's an Active Record implementation, which is usually something probably you don't need to worry about uh, in the s simplest of things i th think of it as it, it's general one row in the database is equal to an object in your application and that's has some implications to it uh, but basically that's what it is um, you know we basically have a little bit of some technical jargon related to orms and kind of more de basically development these days anyway but you know it's an ORM, which basically stands for Object Relational Mapper, and then there's Active Record, which is the eloquent style, uh, the kind of design behind it, and then there's also Data Mapper, which is a slightly different uh, implementation of an ORM. But ultimately, the differences I think are minimal, and it's more of a preference on how you like to use it uh, than anything. Some people more architecturally pure and want to follow principles of object-oriented programming to the utmost like thing data mapper might be more your style if you're interested in like kind of simple simpler api to use something or maybe a little bit easier to, to work with active record might be your choice look them up figure it out for yourself give both a try and go from there uh i really kind of put it in as because none of that those technical terms only mean something if you know what they mean. Like object relational mapper for somebody who's trying to learn object oriented program really doesn't mean much. So that's why I put in these other uh, sentences so that, you know, maybe that'll help understand what's going on with the actual, what is eloquent, you know? And basically it was like, yeah, you have an object that is representative of your database tables or you have a way of representing values as an object within your application. And I think that's a little bit more descriptive of what's going on. And in both Active Record and Data Mapper, they both end up doing that, uh, which is why I say the differences are more like a nuance or architecture point of view than it is really anything. Uh, so let's just, uh, what basically Eloquent does uh, instead of having to write your queries yourself, you basically have, um, it basically abstracts this PDO into a relatively easy to use uh, set of commands or functions that you can call anywhere in your application really easily, uh, which I find to be really nice to work with, which is why I'm giving this presentation. Uh, so basically, here's how we can define a model. And in this, uh, in this um, talk, you should be aware, right, that there are migrations. If you're not familiar with what those are, uh, they're basically a way to define your database structure uh, with PHP code. So you can basically say, you know, hey, create a post table um, or an article, what have you. Post is pretty standard, so we'll just stick with it. Uh, but yeah, your migrations allow you to like set up your table. So you say that you want a post table to have a title a description, a content, or the body, what have you, uh, some timestamps, and maybe like is published field or published at date, something like that. And you can define that in your migrations, then you run it, and your database table gets built by the execution of that. And it essentially says that there's, you know, it basically creates that table. So that table then exists in the database. And then this is how you can actually use that database or table in your application. So we're actually defining the model that represents the posts table in our database. And we can start out with what you see on the screen at the moment. 
uh, that is basically the amount of code you need in order to start working with it. Uh, in case you ever don't want to even write all that, if you can just remember this command, which if you're using uh, Laravel, you should probably go ahead and learn some of those PHP artisan commands because you will be using them all the time, or at least I do. I don't know. It's up to you. So if we wanted to create a post, you can basically define an array if you want and just pass that to the post create method, which will create the post for you. Uh, you can also inline the array. So I just did that in case somebody maybe wasn't sure what was going on. Hopefully it's a little clearer, you can see. Uh, but typically in applications, you're gonna do post create uh, and maybe request all or some sort of input and you're gonna pass that along and your post will be created for you. It's pretty sweet, except for, there's actually a problem if you do this out of the box. You'll most likely run into this and you're like, hey, I'm just trying to get started. What the heck is going on? Um, so what's actually happening is there's a property on your model that actually protects, from the get-go, it protects you from some people trying to manipulate your data. And you have to kind of tell it, hey, these fields you can go ahead and fill in. Nobody, that's okay. Like we don't have a problem with that. So go ahead and do that. You do that with this protected fillable property on your model. So you define that and then you give it a try again to create your posts and you don't get the mass assignment exception. You access the columns or field on your of your data just as the name. So like uh, title, uh, if there's an underscore, you would have to put the underscore, but for the most part, this is pretty much what you got going. Uh, case, you know, un never fails, right? Somebody needs to update something. Your, now you got to find the post, which is a easy as heck method, find, then you set the title, you can save it. You can also do that in one line by using the update method and passing an array, really similar to how you do the create. Uh, and then again, you have the same thing with like the request all, which basically just takes the request object and pass and turns it into an array and then would pass it along. And if you wanted, if you had a bunch of models, like a collection or something, uh, you can also do the save many. And we don't want a collection as we talk about a little bit later in this talk, they're like arrays with super abilities. Uh, they're really awesome. And I really suggest you look into those because they're pretty cool. Uh, anyway, so then to delete things, you got a couple options. You can do just delete on the one or you can pass a, an array of IDs and it'll delete them all. If you wanted to do soft deletes, because those examples right that I just showed you in the previous slide right here on this slide are they will actually remove the row from the database. So Sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes it's no big deal if it's just a little app you're building for yourself, or maybe you actually do want to destroy the data and you don't really need to keep it around, right? So just get rid of it. But you can also implement soft deletes. There's a soft deletes trait that you can add to your model and that'll uh, enable the ability to soft delete, which means it'll you know, remove it from queries or the results by, and you'll have to add, update a migration. Like you have to update the database in order to do that but it's pretty easy. Look up the migration stuff for soft deletes. It's easy. Uh, but yeah, so basically then it'll add a field or column to your database that so, you know, is deleted or whatever. And then also I think a deleted at field. And then anytime you do like a, you know, say, give me all the posts, then it'll automatically remove deleted items and it won't give you the full set. It'll just give you the non-deleted, uh, posts, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, now when you do those delete and destroys, the rows stay, but the they're no longer gonna re like show on your site or they're no longer visible essentially. Uh, but with those, with soft deletes, there's a couple other functions that come with it. So force delete, restore, trashed, only trashed, history trashed. So anyway, at this point in the talk, I uh, wanted to open up the floor to questions uh, just because I wanted to make sure everybody understood what was going on uh, in terms of having very little code, but having the ability to create, update, remove posts without ever having to define any of that functionality. Like you just, you know, at the, the point, like basically this is all we have added to our model and we're already able to do all of that stuff, which is awesome. You know, I think that's one of the powers of Eloquent is just look at very little code 90% of which was uh, generated for you. And you just tell it what you want fillable. And then you, if you want soft leads, you don't have to do that. So you could even take out a couple of lines there, but no big deal. Because if you've never used this before, like, well, how does it know, like you have a post model, how does Eloquent even know to go to the posts table, right? You didn't tell it to do that. So how does it know? 
So basically, it looks at the name of the class, lowercases it, pluralizes it, and then looks for that in your database as a table, which is pretty smart. I mean, it's pretty convenient that it does it for you. If you wanted to override that, there is a property you can throw on your model that um, is called table, and you just call it whatever you want. So if you're, say, moving a project into Laravel that doesn't have the same sort of data schema, then you can basically make Eloquent work with your schema pretty flexible, which is pretty awesome. Uh, one thing I would like to note, an idea there that's going on in that whole setup of why the model is referred to as a single post, right? Because if you think active record, it's a single row. So you're getting one post back generally. It's not always true, but generally. And then you have posts table, right? So plural posts. It's very like supposed to match our natural language. Like there's that's a very clean idea and allows you to talk about things easily rather than always trying to say like blog posts or um, some other name that, you know, it's just, it's trying to keep it very clear and very simple, which is awesome. So let's do some basic queries because I think maybe that'll help people see like what they can do with Eloquent. So if you want to grab all the records, basically it's going to return back uh, an array or essentially this is JSON, but basically it's going to return back a set of all of the posts in your table. You want to do some basic queries with some constraints. You know, you throw the post where author ID equals one. You can actually omit the equals if it is equals. Uh, and then you have all these other operators that you can use and do, you know, different types of queries on. Uh, you can order by with by calling a function. Default is, I think, ascending. So if you want to do descending, you just pass that as a second parameter. It's chainable. So it's a very, very fluent syntax in terms of writing out, you know, what your calls are gonna be in Eloquent. And you got all these different types of things that like functions you can call that, that'll adjust your query based on the situation that you need at that point in your application. So it's really pretty handy. Like you can just add new functions, new calls, and you change what you get back. You can also do an array of where clauses essentially, if you wanted to do that, you know, it's, it's pretty flexible. Like you can do a lot of things that you may or may not want to do. I asked the crowd this that was there at the time, and there's actually some, some people thought it maybe wasn't the best code. They had uh, arguments against it, but I think in terms of like writing queries, I think, okay, it's not too bad. One of the more interesting things was I think some of the people who had issues were more like database administrators, and so they got hung up on the order of the calls I made here, which don't really matter in Eloquent because, um, it's all just function calls. It builds up a series of, I think, arrays. And then once you actually call get, it goes through and builds up your actual query. So you can call them in any order, but they just could not get past in their head. Like the select should be at the top and then the join and then where. And like, we can still do better than that code because there's a lot of things that in that little snippet that I think are already handled in a much cleaner way. Uh, but anyway, we'll get to it. So there's also custom scopes and we've got to do, to do that. It's basically like if you wanted to do a where clause, but you didn't want to write it out every time, because let's say if you litter your application with all these calls to like, in this example, that you see on the screen, where published at is less than or equal to carbon now. So you could do that throughout your like controllers, but then if you need to go change what is determined as published, right? You need to add like another where, or, you know, maybe you want to say, something you just want to change it. maybe you just want to like make it less than instead of equal to like for whatever reason like that would be an, an issue but uh you could very easily change that in one spot if you use scopes and so you would access that uh let's see so if you look here at the first one we got where post stop published at less than carbon or less than now basically and we change that now we just say published which published posts published where like that's just very easy to read and i don't have to think about what's happening right it's just simple like i don't have to parse the code i can read it our our natural language which is awesome um so yeah that's just like a small little thing i suggest doing those uh, there's still ways to improve it and that's one of the biggest ones is relationships and this was the shit that when i was first learning eloquent just blew my mind and so if you look at the last function down here, we got author and we return this belongs to user class. But yes, if you look at the bottom here, you got the author function that is this belongs to user 
and that defines that relationship between the posts and the user as in an author, right? Which is why we named it author. So now if you grab the first post there and then you say email, because the relationship returns an instance of our user model, so then we would get basically get our user, that single user, and our user model represents that record. So we got our post model representing the post record and our user model representing the user model. And all of the properties available in both of those uh, tables are available in our Eloquent model because Eloquent uh, automatically does some like magic methods to allow that. If you were paying really close attention and probably already know Eloquent, then you may have picked up when we were doing this initial query, the one where we wrote everything out, we get back the user's email in our post variable. And that's why you could actually uh, access it like post arrow email. But if, that, if you really think about that, does that, that doesn't really make sense because the email doesn't belong to the posts. The post belongs to an author. So when we actually define the relationship in Eloquent, it allows us to access it as post author email, which is very clear into what's actually happening, which I think is way better than actually grabbing just the data you need using like a select statement and, and grabbing certain fields off of a database. I think that's way better. So you got post author email instead of post email because post email doesn't really make sense. So there's all these types of relationships you can set up, which give you back different things. I don't really want to go through all of them because they take a lot of time. I will put some time into polymorphic relations because those were another thing that blew my mind because the relationships, okay, you, you know, return an instance of a thing. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Polymorphism, though, that's a whole different ballgame in itself, let alone defining it with just one thing. You know, if you wanted to like or favorite a uh, item uh, entity in your application, then you can set it up so that, you know, you, you could have, you know, posts, likes or some or likes posts, or you would have some table that would allow you to track, like, say, in this example in the database uh, that you see on the screen, we're looking at hotels and cities. So you could like a city, you could like a hotel, you would normally... I guess probably have like a table that would represent those things, but then you're recreating code, you're recreating tables all to keep track of just data. And ultimately, you know, like you should be able to set all, all that up in one thing, which is what polymorphic allows you to do. Uh, so here's how you would define it. Now, if you really want to look at this anymore, this is taken straight from the, the documentation at, at Laravel.com. So you can look this up and it might make more sense or if you want to know more about it, Here's how you define it. The one to notice is the like, which it would be represented in its own tables of likes, returns morph to, which then that's what tells when you make a call to, so let's say, post likes. Uh, once you make that call, then the morph to, I think, tells Eloquent to take the likable type and the likable ID and then that's what it looks up to return those instances of those records, right? And then you can do that for, it'll return the likes for the posts or like say you like a user or you it just returns those objects as opposed to some generic like like object, which I think is really awesome. Uh, but moving on, cause I don't want this to go on for too long but there's query relations. Uh, you can query on like the relationship and grab those. You can create within there. Um, one thing to note, uh, this took me a little while to pick up on and it's in the documentation, but you know, just didn't necessarily, wasn't clear to me. So I'm gonna make a point about it. If you call the relationship like a property, you get a collection returned to you. If you call the relationship as a function call, it returns an instance of the relationship. Now, the difference is, is obviously, as I mentioned earlier, collections allow you to do things. So basically you're getting back an array and then if you return back the instance of the relationship when you make the function call, that allows you to actually continue chaining and querying or limiting your query or doing other things in your query to get back the data that you want. So it's a, it's a thing to be aware of, but isn't really, you know, like that crucial, but just be aware that that's what, 
when you have the parentheses or you don't, it's different. It returns different things, and you need to be aware of that. So these, if you notice in the query, we said, I think, get, but there's also call to all or first. And this is what happens uh, when you make those calls. So that's when the, the query is actually built and executed and returns, you know, first returns an object of the model. Get returns a collection of models of like that, that object model uh, limited to, I think, the per page property on the model, which is another property. And I get, I think towards the end, I think there's a slide about all the different properties that are available. It's crazy. There's a ton. It's awesome. All returns to all of them in a collection, which is basically no an unlimited get, right? Which is all, which is pretty much what makes sense. And then also you can paginate things automatically. And all you have to do is say paginate and then the pass the number of items you want. And that'll automatically limit the page to that uh, amount, which is awesome. It is, it'll automatically handle setting a get parameter in your URL for like per page. So it basically automatically gets that for you every time because Eloquent looks in the request object that Laravel provides on every request and it will know that that, uh, that variable or whatever, that per page variable is set. So it'll automatically know what page it's on or I guess, yeah, the page is what it is, not the per page, but it knows which page it's on and it'll return you the right set of data which is awesome, man. So I wanted to talk about collections a little bit. Uh, I'm a big fan of Adam Wathen, and he's got a book coming out very soon, I think, that talks about all of these collections and how to use them. And I'm super pumped and I can't wait for it to come out. But, you know, he's busy building Laravel Valet or whatever. So I guess we'll have to wait for the book. Um, but anyway, you know, we've all written this code probably like 100 times each. And really what's going on, and Adam, I'm sure, explains this really well in his book because I've seen a sample chapter and it looks really awesome and really helped me understand what's really going on. Uh, but, you know, we've all looped over an, an item and we've set it into essentially a result thing and we've either formatting or maybe conditionally removed stuff. You can do all that kind of stuff with collections and it basically allows you to loop over things and call functions like closures, right, on that you pass to the function on the data you're passing to it as well. I mean, it's really awesome. Uh, the map here is kind of a simple example, but I don't know. I think it's a little bit easier to read and it is a little bit of a mental shift because once you, at first I was like, Oh, I'll just use um, the for each still because I don't really care. But once you actually understand what's happening with map and you got used, you get used to those functions instead of the actual for each, well, then once you see like map or transform or sum or flatten or any of these functions down here, then you automatically know kind of what's going on in the code, right? Whereas if you see a for each, then you have to go basically parse in your mind what's happening. Like, is it conditioned? Is it reducing? Is it mapping this to a different thing? Is it transforming this to something else? Is it, you know, what's going on within the for each? Whereas using these function calls, you can just read it and you once you understand how it works and what's going on, it's actually much easier to read the code by using these function calls because they do certain things. And yeah, it takes a little bit of effort to do that, but it's gonna take you effort every time you read that code. So once you get like this kind of universal set, which is what you know using a framework kind of provides, you start to get a way better and faster understanding of what's going on in code because you don't have to parse as much when you're reading code, which is, is awesome. Uh, so moving on though, because this isn't really about collections, eager loading. Uh, so basically when you set up that relationship with the post and author, when I call author, then Eloquent makes a call for the author information. So it would be awesome if you could automatically, like when you're going to grab that post, grab the author as well and save yourself a little bit of a query. Or, you know, in the case of like, say a blog index, when you have 10 or 20 articles by 15 different authors, well, real quick, you can see well, if I'm going to grab all of these posts, that's one query. And then if each author, that's 15 authors, well, now I'm doing 16 queries and that's getting out of hand pretty fast. And that's just a simple example. You could easily have like 150, 200 queries without even paying attention um, easily. So eager loading basically says, okay, we're going to go grab some posts and you can say, grab the author as well. And you do that with is the function call that you would pass or you can set up a property in your model that allows you to 
say which models you want this automatically loaded with. So sometimes in your application, you may want to load like a post, a post to an author is a decent example because you almost always going to need that author, like almost always. Um, maybe say a user on a profile might be even, even more likely that you're always going to need that. So every time that you grab user, you might as well go ahead and grab that profile. So you can throw that in as a property on the user model and Eloquent's going to grab the profile every time you grab the user just automatically. If you want to do it on a specific like query by query basis, so like you're on the blog index. Okay, well then in the controller for index on the blog controller, then you're going to go ahead and say, you know, that you're going to use this with function, pass the author, and it'll automatically return the, um, or automatically grab the author when it makes the query for the post. It's just something to be, you know, to consider and think about when you're building these applications. And then if you ever run into performance issues and you're like, well, why is this making a hundred queries? To, and it's like, well, this is why. So it's out there, look into it and move on. So here, yeah, here's some additional properties. Um, basically, if you want to use timestamps, Eloquent by default looks for them. Uh, you can disable them if you want. Just turn the so the property to false and it doesn't even bother with them. So if you ever access the created at timestamp in the Eloquent or Laravel, you know that it automatically returns and casts that field as a instance of carbon, which carbon is a wrapper around PHP's date time class. Yeah. And it has like, like a lot of functions that are nice and friendly, easy to use rather than writing, you know, date H colon I colon S whatever, whatever those letters mean. Uh, it's a little bit easier to use than that. So it automatically gives you that instance. But then when we added like the published at on our post table, that just gets treated as I think a string essentially or eloquent cast that to an instance of carbon for you by using the dates array, or you can actually use the, or yeah, the dates property or the cast property will actually do the same thing. Uh, you can publish that date. It does returns an instance of carbon as well. Uh, so there's all these different cast types where eloquent will automatically casts a certain value or a certain field to a certain type. Um, so, you know, just be aware of those and use them if you want. There's also these other properties, but I'm going to have to leave them up to you to go look up. Um, they're kind of use cases are there, but it's not as universal as this talk is really intended to do. I wanted to touch on some accesses and mutators. So this allows you when you're querying your database and like say storing information, you could, you know, format data a certain way if you wanted and access and mutators kind of allow you to do that. And also like if you're pulling data out, and you want to format, like say a first name a certain way, that's an accessor. So you have to, in your model, say get first name attribute. You have to have that specific key of stuff. Like you have to say a key or get, then the column name and then attribute. And you gotta do it snake case and it'll automatically figure that out. But if you don't use that um, specifics, like little key, function call there, then it doesn't really know what to do with it. So you got to say get attribute. And then the middle part there is the column name. So it passes the value. And then when it returns uh, uppercase first, that means if you look there in the comment in the code part, uh, has Andy in there, lowercase, and then the first name, you access it. And then output is uppercase Andy, which is pretty handy. I mean, it allows you to like not have, you know, a bunch of UC firsts in your views and your blade templates. You, you can just have a nice clean, you know, first name. And notice too, you don't say get first name attribute. You just access it like you would the column in like normal Eloquent, which is pretty awesome. So on the other side, when you're storing data in, in the information or into the database, you have set first name attributes. So that's pretty much the same. Get, set, get it. Pretty simple. The one thing you have to be aware of is though, you don't return out of the mutator. You just add the attribute to the, this uh, attributes property on your model and then do the formatting. And then when it puts it in there, it'll automatically change it into the database. So now the input is Andy and then the DB, we have um, the capitalized Andy there. And th those are accessors and mutators, pretty awesome. Uh, you can do all kinds of different formatting with them. You can format dates that way automatically. It's, it's really handy. You can also do custom methods uh, with Eloquent, which just allows it to do stuff pretty easily. 
So you can do, um, you just create like a public static function, uh, whatever you want it to be named, the parameter is gonna be, and then you can return the call to the model itself, uh, like return static where username is equal to username, and then grab the first one, and oops, looks like I left off parentheses, but um, you know, sorry. Oh, I just find it to be a little bit easier to read instead of doing this at the top, you just do the bottom, right? So you come back six months from now. Yeah, it's not particularly hard to figure out like, hey, user where username, username first, you know, it's easy to figure that out. But sometimes you get more complicated, right? Let's say you had a couple where clauses or I don't know, maybe some sort of join for some reason. I don't know. Uh, if you have that in one function name, like find by username or whatever that case would be, it's just easier to read. Like, you know what's happening in the code. So wrapping up, there's not too much left. Um, well, there's a lot left, but there's only so much time I could do for a presentation. Uh, I wanted to say, touch on events. So when Eloquent writes to the database or, or reads from a database, actually, maybe it doesn't do it when it's reading, but uh, creating, updating, saving, deleting, restoring, whatever, those all, all those are like events. Like that's happening like before the something is stored, it's creating, and then after it's creating, it's created, right? Those events get fired throughout the application. So you can actually tie in. So like in the instance of like, say every time you create a new user, you wanted to fly, you know, send off an email, which I think you would actually do this a different way, but in trying to get the example of what is going on in an event, I'm gonna use it. Um, but yeah, let's say every time and a user is created because that only happens once in your application, right? You only create the user, then he exists, then you just edit that shit. So anytime that is a, say the created event were, were to be fired for the user, you could send an email like, hey, welcome, right? Easy, you could send that. But otherwise you would have to say like, okay, now that we've created the user and then the, right there in your controller, okay, now let's send out an email. By doing this, you can keep your controller clean because your controller really shouldn't be responsible for sending email. It's basically gonna be like, hey, grab some data, return something, right? It should be really simple. Like maybe you do a couple little things, but you know, controllers, very little code, right? Very little. And these events, you know, you can do them on different things. So let's say you wanna be notified anytime somebody deletes an account, right? Well, on the, once a user is deleted, that event gets fired, you can hook into it, and then you can send yourself an email saying, hey, so-and-so closed their account. You just lost, you know, $1 million or whatever. You can do those sorts of like event hooks, which are really awesome. Um, there is more, but you know, we ain't got time. This was supposed to be like an hour long talk and, or actually it was, I intended it to be about half an hour, but it ended up being like an hour because I had so many questions along the way. Uh, that was kind of like my basic introduction to Eloquent, all the little different things you can do. And if you guys are ever interested, uh, if you want to look at these slides more, uh, you can look at the URL there. Or want to find me on Twitter. It's all that stuff right there.